Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, we're going to talk about order of operations in JavaScript and how they compare to math. Then we're going to talk about other uses for parentheses. So let's just start with our console open here and build some JavaScript statements, some expressions where we're doing some math. And in math class, we would expect the multiplication and division to be done before the addition and subtraction. So we would expect this to be 2 times 10 is 20 plus 5 and yield 25. And we see that it does the same order of operations in JavaScript. And I think that it's important to note that multiplication and division are the same operator. Dividing is really just multiplying by 1 over the number. So in this case, we're going to expect 20 to be divided by 2 and then multiplied by 5 in that order. Because again, division is really just multiplying by 1 over the number. So 20 divided by 2 is 10 times 5. We're expecting 50 there. Instead of, if we let multiplication happen first, we would be having 20 divided by 10. But again, we know better than that. Division is really just multiplying by 1 over the number. So we're expecting 20 divided by 2, which is 10 times 5, which is 50. And indeed, JavaScript evaluated that exactly the same way that math would. Similarly, addition and subtraction are exactly the same operator. It's just that subtracting is adding the negative of the number. So in this case, we're expecting 10 minus 2, which is 8 plus 5, which is 13. And we get that. So if we wanted to override these natural order of operations, we could use parentheses, just like in math. In our first example, if we really did want to divide 20 by 2 times 5, if we wanted the 2 times 5 to happen first, we would put it in parentheses, and that would override of operations. And now the answer would be 20 divided by 10, which is 2. And JavaScript seems to be working in exactly the same way as math, and so that's a good thing. We also already know that in order to do a power, to take 5, for example, to the third power, we have to use the math object that's provided to us. It's built right into JavaScript, and the pow method, which again is just provided simply because we're working in JavaScript. Every browser has a JavaScript engine that can understand these objects and methods. We just get to use them. So 5 to the third power would be 5 times 5, 25, times 5, which I believe is 125. And there's our example of exponentiation. Mixed exponentiation, multiplication, and addition together, we would expect it to evaluate in exactly the same way as it does in math. In other words, this would evaluate to 125. We would multiply by 3 to take it up to 375, and then add 10 for 385. And indeed, that's what we get. So the good news is that the order of operations in JavaScript work exactly the same way as they did in math. However, we use parentheses in new and different ways in JavaScript as well. For example, when we declare a function, even if that function has no arguments, even if that function is just a single statement function, when we define it, we always define it with parentheses, whether there are arguments or not. So I've got two examples over here, the high world function that's defined with parentheses. It has one statement that it logs out to the console, high world. And I've got another example of a function. It's the do math function that has three different arguments inside the parentheses. But again, when you're declaring that function, when you're defining it for the first time, you must include the parentheses behind the function name. So that's a second use for parentheses. I'm going to clear my console here. I'm going to run this high world function. When I run a function, I run it with parentheses. And when I hit enter, that function has console logged out the high world statement. And that's showing up right here in my console. And I do not have a return statement, so it's returned undefined because there's no explicit return statement. But this is our second use of parentheses now beyond order of operations. First, when I define the function, I use parentheses. And then when I run the function, I use parentheses. And I could run the function over here in my web page, too. If I decide to do that, I've got to use the parentheses to say I want to run that function. And I'll save and refresh. And there we go. My function is run again. Now, within this function, I've got only one statement. 
console.log. And if you're in my JavaScript class, you're using that statement a lot to log out the value of variables. In this case, I don't even have any variables. I'm just console logging out this text, hi world. But notice the parentheses around hi world. That's because log is a method. And you can think of a method as a built-in function. The word function in JavaScript is usually used for those unique functions that you build. Method is usually used as the word for the built-in functions that are given to you simply because you're using JavaScript in a web page. And so log is one of those things that's just available to you. And console is our object. Log is the method. And whatever you put inside the parentheses of the log method will get logged out to the console here. Just like I, when I use the math object and I use the pow method, remember my arguments went inside of parentheses. So that's a third use for parentheses to surround the arguments of any built-in method. The fourth use for parentheses are to surround if, else, for, and while clause information. So in this function, I've got the do math function. It's declared with the parentheses. It has three different arguments that I'm going to give it in order for it to function. Then it sets answer, assigns it to zero, and does an if statement. And inside the if statement, my conditional operation that's either going to evaluate true or false is surrounded by parentheses. And what it's asking me is, is your first argument, is your operator argument equal to add? And if that's true, we'll go ahead and execute these statements inside these curly braces, which is to set answer, assign it to the addition of item one and item two. And then we're going to console log out the answer. So let's run the do math function. And let's run it with the add operator. And let's give it a couple numbers, 10 and 20. And I'll hit the semicolon. And that statement is going to run this do math function because I've got the parentheses with these three arguments as soon as I save and I refresh my page. And here on line 26, we're console logging out high world because I ran the high world function. And here on line 35, I'm console logging out answer because I ran the do math function. So I hope that helps you see the many different uses for parentheses in JavaScript. Thank you.